To install SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio, we navigate to this URL. Scroll a little bit down and under Developer, click Download Now. That will download the executable. We will run it. That will open up the installation guide. Here you will choose the basic, accept, install, and we will fast forward. That's it. And now we will install the SQL Server Management Studio. So here you click install SSMS. Scroll a little bit down here, download SSMS. Choose the free download for SQL Server Management Studio. That will download another executable. We will also open and run that. Here we will click install. That's it. We can click close here and we can close our browser. We will also choose to close here. And then we go to our start menu. Search for SQL Server 2022 Configuration Manager. Click that one. Over here you will see the SQL Server and the state is running. You can choose to click it and either right click and click stop, pause, or you can use these buttons up here. So it's running, that's great. I can close this one again. Then I go to the start menu again and I type management studio. And this is the SQL Server Management Studio. I want to open it, so click here. And here we can connect to our database. You'll see the server name and the authentication. We're using Windows Authentication and this server name is our workstation name. In case this is blank, we're going to find it. Go to your start menu, type in CMD and click enter. Now you type who am I, click enter. And if I move it down here, you can see that this here, that is the server name. So simply just control C, control V, paste it in up here and we'll click connect. That's it. This is the SQL Server Management Studio. We have the overview over here. And to write a new query, I just go up here and click new query. That will open up the query window to the right. Best practice is to write these query in caps lock. So I'll click it on my keyboard here. And that is because these queries are easily written when they are in caps lock. We will start by creating a new database we can work on. So here you will write create database and we will have the database name. Let's call it blacklist and to end the line I'll have a semicolon. Then click enter, type in go. Now we can execute this query by clicking execute over here. That will create the database. If you want to inspect it, you can go over here to the plus into databases and you will see our newly created database over here called blacklist. To use this database, I go over here to my query window again. I'll click enter and then I will say use blacklist and I'll say semicolon again. I'll click enter and I'll say go. Now I only want to execute the use blacklist and not the create database because we already created that. To do so, I just mark these two here and then I'll click execute. You will see down here that our commands completed successfully. If we try to create the database again, we would be getting an error. Now I want to create a table in my database. So I go up here and then I click enter. To create a table, I'll say create table and then I'll give my table a name. I will call mine companies like that. Then I will click enter. I'll have a parenthesis start and here comes my table. But let's create the end first. So I'll click enter twice. So I go down here. 
I'll have a parenthesis in and a semicolon. I can also click enter once more and have a go here. Now go up here inside these parentheses. What I will do here is that I will say that, then a space, and I will disable the caps lock. And here I'll say int. That means that this that number will be of the format integer. Integer are whole numbers that could be one, zero, two, minus five, whole numbers that is without decimals. Then I'll have another space. I'll enable the caps locks again. And here I'll say primary key. That means that this is the unique identifier for this table. Here I'll have a comma. I'll click enter. I'll also want the company name. So, so I write C, I disable caps lock and I will say company underscore name. And I'll have a space. Here I'll say var char and I'll define that this will be 30 characters. I also want this company name to have a value. I will not allow null values. Null means nothing. It just doesn't mean an empty value. It means nothing. So here I'll say not null in caps and I'll have a comma and I'll click enter. I'll also have the last header, which will be reason. And here I'll say var char parentheses 40. That one could be a little bit bigger. And I will have another comma. That's it. Let's try to run this query that will create the table in our database. So I mark this, I'll click execute. And if I go over here to blacklist, then I can click this plus and click plus. And in this tables, you can see a DBO companies. That is the table that we just created. If I click this plus here, you can see if I go into columns, I click this plus here, you can see that we have the VAT, company name and reason. Let's also fill some data into this table. So I click enter once more. To fill data into a table, again, I'll enable the caps lock, I'll say insert into and then I'll take the companies. Here, if I start writing C, you can see that this intelligence comes up. The companies is marked. That means that I can just put in the tabulator on my keyboard and it will autofill. You should always use this intelligence since this reduces error. So we insert into the companies. I'll have a space and a parentheses start. Then I want to define the column headers. And here I'll just type in that comma, caps lock, and I'll type C. Now you can see we have this intelligence comes up again. I can just press tab. I'll have another comma. Here I'll say R, reason. That's it. Then I'll click enter. Now I'll have the caps locks again. I'll say values like this. Then I'll click enter and I'll click the tabulator. Now I'll have a parenthesis start and we can start by creating the first row that will go into our table. So just right after me, I'll say four, five, eight, six, five, seven, six, four. That will be the first cell of this row. So I'll have a comma. I'll have a space and this is just for readability. The first number here, that was our VAT number. That was an integer. We defined it up here. The next one that is a var char or a string of variable length. To type in the value of this, we need to surround it with single quotation marks. Let's call the first company sub photo like this and have another single quotation mark. Now we need a reason. So here I'll have a comma and again I will surround it with single quotation marks. Here I'll say didn't pay like this and another single quotation mark. Let's end the row by a parenthesis end. Have a comma because we are ready for the next line. Click enter here and we can create the next one. I'll create it a little bit faster. Feel free to 
pause the video if things goes too fast. That's it. That's our three rows into our table. I'll click another enter and then I'll move back here and I'll have a semicolon. Click enter and I'll have a go. So this one will insert these value into our tables. So mark it here. Click execute. And you will see that it says three rows affected. Let's fetch the data. So I go back here. I'll click enter. Again, I'll enable the caps lock. So here I just want to select all the data from the table called companies. To do so, I will say select. Then I'll have a star asterisk. That means that I will select everything. I'll click enter. Then I'll say from where should I take the data from? I'll take it from the companies like this. That's it. And here we don't really require a go. Let me explain what the go does. The go separates these queries into batches. That means that if we want to run it all at once, it will first run this, then it will run this, this and this. In case we haven't done those, then we would get an error because these steps needs to be done sequential. But here, after we have this go, we can just select the data from companies. We don't need further goes. That means that if I mark this, I'll click execute. We now have selected all the data from this table. Let's say I want to fetch with the condition I can go up here. I can click enter. I'll say where and that will be where that equals and let's give it a number i can say one two one five seven three two one and i will mark this i'll execute the query and here you can see that we have our fetch data with our condition let's copy our queries so i will control a here in the query window i'll say control c and i'll go down to my start menu i type notepad and open it. Let me drag it in from my other screen here and I'll control V. So now I have it stored here. Let's close down the SQL Server Management Studio. And here, do I want to save these queries amongst others? No, I don't really need that. The data will be in our database. Your next lesson is here and if you want help you should join the I Love Automation Discord with more than 7000 RPA developers ready to network and help you.